Hi there, Biology 400. This is Mr. Workman, and this is going to be your screencast session two for energy and organisms. Um, as you begin viewing the screencast, make sure you've got some paper, your two column note pages in your packet, so that you can take good notes. Uh, of course, on the left side, what you'll be doing is writing down key ideas, uh, key terms, main ideas, key um, main topics, and then on the right side, what you should be doing is writing down definitions or explanations or even diagrams of those main ideas. So let's get to it here. We're going to talk about um, um, chemical reactions in this particular screencast. So here's our bear. Uh, he's eating and the fact that he needs to eat is going to be important and discussed later in later screencasts. But right now what we're going to just focus on is um, chemical reactions and how chemical reactions enable organisms to transfer energy and that's one of the key um, parts of being a living organism. Um, the idea of chemical reactions of course is that you start with these things called reactants and you end with these things called products and in many instances what you need to do is add some energy to activate the reaction and actually make it start happening. So for example, I have this box of matches and a match, and what I'm going to do is input some energy here into the uh, using this friction uh, frictionable material here on the side of the box. I'm going to input some energy into these materials, these reactants in this match, and I'm going to start a chemical reaction. Okay, now flame and heat is an indication that a chemical reaction is occurring. Um, so this feels warm and I can see the light that this flame is emitting and what's happening is the materials that I started with are changing and I have new materials. Um, now the total amount of mass here has not changed but what we started with and what we ended with are very different. So if you look at an unburned match versus a burned match, different. Now, the amount of energy that I needed to input into the reaction uh, to get it started, that is, is called the activation energy. So the heat energy from the friction that I generated from rubbing the match on the side of the box, that activated the reaction. And so this is what activation energy means and what it is. Now as we talk about chemical reactions there's there's two general types of reactions we can talk about and the first one I want to talk to you guys about is is um, a type of reaction we call endothermic reaction um, and the thing you need to understand here is that this term is two part has two parts so endo means into or entering and thermic refers to heat or energy. So literally what endothermic means is energy is going into the reaction. So if you were experiencing an endothermic reaction or if you did mix a couple of chemicals in a beaker and the reaction that resulted was an endothermic reaction, it would feel very cold because heat energy is entering into the reaction to actually make it occur and, and it continues to occur. So one thing that you can do to understand what a chemical reaction is, is actually graph the progress of the reaction. This horizontal axis here, this is your x-axis. This uh, could be labeled time. Here it's labeled reaction pathway. So from where you start, it's over here on the left side of the graph and to where you finish. This is on the right side of the graph. The vertical axis here is labeled potential energy or energy amount. So what I want you to notice here is that the amount of energy that the reactants have is less than the amount of energy that the products have. Um, notice that we need to have a little bit of a boost in energy to get the reaction to occur in, in these instances. So um, here's a particular example. Uh, photosynthesis, what you have is energy input into the system and what you're starting with, the, the physical materials, the reactants, are carbon dioxide and water. And the output of this, the physical material output of photosynthesis, which is a complicated set of chemical reactions, are carbohydrates. 
and oxygen. And as you well know, carbohydrates are sugar molecules, and sugar molecules have a lot of energy. So the products here of carbohydrate, uh, sugar, and oxygen have more energy than carbon dioxide and the water that started with. That energy comes from the input of energy from the light, uh, from the sun. <clears throat> now, all endothermic reactions progress as a result of increased energy input into the system. The reverse of that, of course, is an exothermic reaction. Now look at this word. The word exo means exiting, and thermic means energy or heat energy, as sometimes is the case. And the thing I want you to understand in an exothermic reaction is that as the reaction is occurring, energy is exiting the system. So this burned match, as it was burning, heat energy and light energy was exiting as the reaction progressed. So the way we graph that is much the same way that the endothermic reaction was graphed. Our timeline or our reaction pathway is the horizontal axis. We graph energy on the vertical axis. And what I want you to see here is that reactants are labeled here higher than products. So for an example of exothermic reactions, this match has more energy than this burned match. What I started with had more energy in it than what I ended with. And the difference between the amounts of energy in this, the unburned match and the burn match, we can account for that energy in terms of the amount of energy that was in the heat and the light of the flame that we saw as the reaction was progressing. Do you see this bump here, this um, activation uh, energy as we call it here? That, that bump in energy, you can think of the friction that I generated by striking the match on the box as the activation energy there. And this part of the graph right there represents that, that striking of the match on the box. Cellular respiration, which is the process where mitochondria, these are organelles in your cells, we're going to learn about those in uh, um, forthcoming units here, they produce adenosine triphosphate by breaking down sugar. So what um, we start with are sugars, glucose, and what you end up with is the physical material of carbon dioxide and um, the result is that the products of this reaction, the, the physical uh, products of this reaction have less energy than the reactants than what you start with. But the difference in that energy is put into this, sorry about the bell guys, the energy is put into this molecule called ATP. So. Um, I want to show you this reaction here, too, um, to let you know that sometimes you can take a reaction and lower the amount of energy that's needed to uh, get it started. You saw that I needed to put energy into this to get the reaction to go. I mean, this, this won't just spontaneously start burning, uh, or the fancy term is combustion. We can't have spontaneous combustion. I've got to input some energy into it to get that reaction started. So this spike in this graph that represents the activation energy and I you know alluded to that in the former slide and here this is an exothermic reaction because our reactants have more energy than our products and just so you understand all chemical reactions require a little bit of activation um, and you also need to understand that all life processes is a result of chemical reactions and if we didn't have a way to lower the amount of energy that was needed to activate chemical reactions, chemical reactions would be so slow that we couldn't really support this process we call life. Now, what we do to lower this activation energy amount required to get, an act, uh, to get a reaction started is called um, catalyzing a reaction. So this shows you a graph of an uncatalyzed reaction where the activation energy is very high. And when you look at a catalyzed reaction, the activation energy required is lower. So if you look at this diagram here, an uncatalyzed reaction um, needs a higher amount of energy to get it started. So that would be like needing to really press down really hard to get a lot more friction to generate the amount of energy needed to get the reaction started. Whereas a catalyzed reaction uh, are reactions where you don't need so much energy, like I would 
just have to strike this very slightly to get it started if I had a catalyst available. In the next um, screencast, we're going to talk about very important types of catalysts that are present in living systems called enzymes. So I do want you to write down this definition of what a catalyst is. A catalyst speeds up the rate of reaction by lowering, lowering the amount of energy that's needed to get that reaction going. And it's also an important idea for you to recognize that catalysts um, can be used over and over again. The catalysts themselves are not used up in the reaction, uh, but they can continue to catalyze or lower the activation energy of multiple reactions. So that's going to be it for this screencast. The next one is going to be all about enzymes. Uh, I hope you're learning and I hope you took good notes. This was screencast two for the Energy and Organisms Unit. See you later, ladies and gentlemen.